guys, welcome back. I am actually in Hong Kong, which is crazy. My husband and I just got off a 16 hour flight. We are here for about 10 hours of a layover and then we're heading to Bangkok. So that's where we're gonna spend the trip. This is just a layover, but we are in one of the lounges and just relaxing, eating, having coffee, sleeping if we want to, and hanging out. But you clicked on this video for a reason, and that is because I wanna show you how you can do Bible study and Bible journaling while traveling. You don't have to make it over complicated. It still can be fun and creative. I just wanted to show you some of the things that I do, some of the supplies I've packed to boost my creativity and help me while I'm doing the Bible journaling while traveling. I'm still not like sleepy enough. I checked my ring app and I think I got three hours and 45 minutes of sleep. Who knows, still awake, but I've got things covered. I actually spent a good amount of time on the flight doing some Bible study. So I'll show you how I did this while not having service. Granted, you can absolutely just read the Bible, study it, take notes, but I just love using the commentary. So this is what I did is I printed out, I went to EnduringWord.com and I did Exodus and Matthew. There's probably, I mean, a lot of pages here and you can see how small I did the font. So this is only, I think like it goes like from Matthew 8, cause that's where I left off from home to, I don't know, maybe Matthew 20 or something or 19. So I have this and then I, because that's what I was currently working in, but I also did Exodus because the last full book that I completed was Genesis. So I was like, maybe I'll go back and forth between New Testament and Old Testament just to mix things up. I'm actually surprised at how much I enjoyed going through Genesis. So I have both of these for options. Again, it's the enduring word. I just wanted the tangible one because I wasn't gonna have service on the flight. Let me show you walk through Matthew. So Matthew, who is also known as Levi, he is a former tax collector. He is the author of this book and tax collectors were not seen as good people in this time. All the Jewish people did not like them because they worked for the Roman army. Again, Jesus picking people that aren't your most typical selection for a team. This is where I left off of the flight, so I actually think I did um, all of this on the flight. Since I didn't have scissors, I just did the old school way. It's much more rough around the edges. And then this is just set up. I did this at home, so you can see when it equally weighs because the pages stick together. So that's where I'm currently at. Okay, so first off, you're gonna need a Bible. Um, this is the She Reads Truth. It is a hefty one. This definitely added a little weight to my backpack, but that's all good. I kind of prioritized what I put in there. So you'll want that. One thing that I use very regularly and I still recommend bringing it while you're traveling, also it's pretty light, is your tip-in. So I'll make sure to link that video up above. But these are just pretty much scraps of piece of paper or not just scraps, like stuff that you've customized that has a blank background where you can take additional notes. So the reason for this is not only to add a little bit of like creative artsy to your Bible, but it gives you more space to take notes in the Bible once you've run out of room on the sides. So I'll show you. 
So for instance, when I was doing Proverbs 31, I really wanted to break down all of these. And so this is a tip-in. And so it's just, you can either washi tape them in. I have quite a variety. Uh, this is actually washi taped in, washi taped most are glued so you can see there's a little bit of stickiness to that um that one's glued this is glued so oh but you can see and then you can add tippins on top of the tippins which is kind of cool so here is a tippin page and then you could see i added additional ones on top which is kind of cool. The purpose of having those is to give you additional space to take notes. With travel, I had, I think it was like a four ounce bottle of glue. I didn't want to bring that for a variety of reasons. So an alternative way to getting your tippins in, washi tape. And here's the thing, washi tape is super light, easy to travel with cheap it can be used for a variety of things not just applying the tip in pages but you can use it to decorate the pages and there's even other notes that i have in here so you can see here um, i did this on the plane where i just cut some post-it notes in half and they were kind of like flailing and like sticking up like that and so i just washi tape those down so they stick so you can use it for so many different things um, you can make you know, little tabs like this. That I would recommend is making sure you have tippins. Next resource, obviously important, is you're gonna want pens, something to write with. I use these Pilot G2 pens. I like the way the ink comes out. The only problem with this is you have to let it dry for like a solid day before you can highlight over it or else it will bleed the ink, which is kind of a bummer. I know that there are pens out there that don't do that, but I just have so many of these and I don't really mind and I don't really wanna buy more pens. Or I brought regular Bic pens just in case these die on me or something like that. I have those. I have my colored pens with their matching highlighters. So I've mentioned before that I don't use a particular color coding highlighting system anymore. It's pretty much if there is text that I want to reference or write notes on, I will highlight that a certain color and then the note I will write in that particular color. So let me give you an example. So here you could see there's different colors here. So, you know, verse three is in green. And if you come over here, verse three, I took the notes in green. Four, pink, pink. So you kind of see that. So it's just an easy way to keep track. This is kind of that same thing where I wrote all this and I didn't want to highlight it because it was going to bleed. I probably could take a highlighter and go over it now, but I guess I don't really care enough to. I'll see if I can show you a spot where I, yeah. And then here, yeah, you'll see like all the color coding. I don't mind it. Um, oh yeah, you can see here where I highlighted prior to it <laughs> being really dried, which is a bummer, but I don't, again, I don't really care. So you'll want some sort of pens, highlighters, and then you obviously want some post-its. So these are good for so many things. You can even make these a tip in, take notes. One thing that I thought I was gonna have an issue with and it didn't really become one is I like to cut these in half. Oh, I guess I could have done that ahead of time. I could have cut this. Oh my gosh. Well, now, now you know, I, I learned the hard way for you guys. So what I would recommend, especially if you have this style Bible where it's, I don't know, a few inches on the columns to take notes, cut this ahead of time in half. You have these perfectly sized post-its that you can put along the side. All I did in the flight is I just kind of like bent it back and forth and then ripped it. So there's like a little bit of that um, tethering, but I don't really care. So bring a few of those. And then the last and most important part, actually, this is the most important part, is if you are doing a commentary style Bible study, I 
highly, highly recommend using and checking out Enduring Word. I'm not sponsored. I just absolutely love it. You can purchase a printed version, so it's all accessible online for free at EnduringWord.com, but they have printable versions, and I went to go get that and pay for it. I was happily going to do that, but they send it to you, and I was doing this like a day of our flight, so instead I just copied, pasted, and printed out a bunch of the commentary, but you can absolutely, if you're traveling and you don't mind spending, I think each book of the Bible was about $12, which it's a hefty amount of notes. So if you're a little lazy and don't want to do it this way, you can always purchase ahead of time the printed version. And I believe you can get the commentary of the entire Bible for about 120 bucks. So there's a few options for you. But what I did is I wanted to make sure I had enough commentary to last the trip. I knew I was going to have times where I was going to be accessible in Wi-Fi. So I wanted to have a variety. I wanted to have two different books to play around with. Before I left, I was working through Matthew. So I just did, I think, Matthew 9 to like 19 and printed all that commentary out and then just put a little clip on there. And then I also did Exodus because the last book of the Bible that I completed the entire book and did Bible journaling was Genesis. So I was like, might as well follow it up. That would be my other thing is just getting Bible commentary, tangible form so that you can use this whether you have internet service or not. That's about it. I do have like little containers to hold everything. So pens and all my like supplies. And then this is my notes and my tippins, but it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. I know some of you guys might be nervous doing that in a very public space. So do whatever you feel comfortable with. I think it's kind of a cool conversation starter to have it out there, but again, do whatever you feel comfortable with and use it as like a crafting opportunity to get into the work. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I am going to be doing a little bit more reading through Matthew, finish the rest of this coffee, and then maybe go whoop my husband in a game of Catan. All right, talk to you guys later.